fellow human beings. Um, you know, Pastor Lee was right a lot of things. You know, service and goodwill and you know, wisdom and doing the right thing is, is really important when you lead a city, right? You, know, you all want to be up there. You all chose to be up there. So I'm really here right now just to say that we are facing a mountain of problems coming down on us. Not me, but us as human beings you know, on this planet. The state, the sun, the, the chemicals, all kinds of things. Massive. You know, people having autism, cancer, this, just grow and grow and grow. The reason is because we're out of balance with nature. We're out of balance with, with what's right and, and, and that works. And it's intense. It's really intense. I mean, you feel that sun out there. That's not a normal Fullerton sun of 10 years ago. It hasn't rained in a long time. It's an issue. You know, it's, a, it's an issue. So I just encourage and invite you all to, when, when you make decisions, to think about that, to think about the future, to think about, you know, the people here that lived here in this place before the white man came, they used to make rules and decisions on seven generations. For seven generations, they thought ahead. How will we do this? You know, I just, I just saw this. It blew me away. You know, fracking. Oh, we got to get gas. We got to get natural gas. We got to do this. There's big money in it. Blah, 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 blah. You know what they do? They drill a well hundreds of feet down here in Fullerton. There's six of them that they're acidizing, which means they're pumping acid into it. Get a load of this. Hydrofluoric acid, 61,000 pounds. Boom, into the ground and destroying the earth down there, leaving those chemicals. Hydrofluoric acid, methanol, butane ethanol, uh, hydrochloric acid, chloride, ammonium chloride, and it goes on and on. It's 1,000, 50,000 pounds. And people don't know what this stuff does, you know. So once again, I just invite you all to, to think deeply, you know. These, these things that are on the surface, maybe laws are passed, there's some studies. No one knows what this is going to do. All of this stuff, the wireless stuff, the, the electromagnetic frequencies that are being pumped out of everything, you know, it's a, it's a really intense thing, you know. The way the country's going as well, think about it. You know, rules and laws being passed that are just in line with the KGB, you know, things that you think are bad. Nazism, you know, martial law, things of, you know, stuff like that. It just takes an earthquake, and this whole place is on fire. There's no water. Dan Hughes has his tank. It's intense. So, so, unlawful detention, all that, you know, you know what I'm talking about. So I just invite you to be well Thank you, sir. I'll be up the next speaker. Um, if you want to see the be wise, I want you to be wise. I want to be wise. I want to be wise. Um, Last September, I was up here speaking about the cynical camping tickets issued to those in our community who have nothing, that are too poor to afford a roof over their head, and we voted down the homeless shelter, and by we, I mean you, and we cite human beings for falling asleep outside when we give them no place to go. At the time, Dan Hughes, sat here, was questioned by Miss Flory, and he said, what are we supposed to do? What are my men supposed to do? They give them warnings, they try to find housing for them, and they refuse help. Well, I'm going to tell you a little story that happened since the last time I was here. And this is about someone named Karen, who's 65 years old, who just recently started receiving Social Security checks. And uh, the first month she got a check, it was ripped off. The second month, I worked with J.D. DiCaprio, and him and this guy named Hector he rides around with from social services, found her a place. I was so happy. She goes there. She refuses. I was unhappy. I blamed her. They blamed her. Everyone blamed her. The following month, she was ripped off again. Didn't have enough money. Month after that, there was no place found. In May, those guys found her another place by the same owner. She goes, doesn't like it, comes back. She refused. They were angry with her. They blamed her. I blamed her. And then she was promptly arrested for warrants for no camping. Now, the only reason I got involved, I'd written her off just like everybody else. 
is because this guy who owns the place, and I won't name him, but I'll tell you all in the email if you'd like to hear it, refused to give her her money back. Her head never touched a pillow, and he would not give her back $750 that she had deposited, even though she never spent a minute there. Because she did give 30-day notice that she wasn't going. None of the people involved in finding this place try to get her money back. I had to do it. I'm not a public servant. Why did I have to get it back? And when I picked up the check, you know what I found? A shithole, folks. It was disgusting. A guy in his underwear answered the door. And this is where you're going to put a 65-year-old woman? It's not their fault. They're not being obstinate. They want to live someplace decent. So don't pretend that they deserve these tickets, and they deserve these arrests, and they deserve to spend six days in jail. They I'm don't. Not Some people do, it. but it's not them. However, when Thanks. my son was murdered by a police officer shot in the back of a submachine gun, I started noticing other cities and their actions and their activities and what they're doing. And so, of course, I mean, I came here many times speaking on many different um, issues about police misconduct. And the last time I was here, I spoke about um, AJ's arrest. Uh, and not speaking about AJ, but I just wanted to question, has anybody, I mentioned this last time I was here, has anybody further pursued a ticket or an arrest against a camera woman who shoved and pushed other people? Not dead, that yeah. Has anybody done anything about that? After all, Jordan Carroll was arrested and had to go to jail. And she was just resp responding back to being a co uh, um, assaulted by, the ca by a camera woman. So has anybody done anything about that? Your chief told me that, that there was a committee that reviewed those tapes. Didn't they review that woman? Didn't they see that woman also uh, uh, doing uh, uh, assaulting other people? She did do it. So I really think that you guys really should look into that. You're going to be a fair government. Come on now, let's be fair. And I also would like to touch upon um, Karen, the homeless woman. Again, I'm on, I'm, on, I'm on social media. And so I see the misconduct in my city and in your city. And when I saw that the homeless woman was arrested for camping, it broke my heart again. It really broke my heart. Instead of arresting somebody or leaving a ticket, they kind of did her like they did AJ. She wasn't there. Her blanket was there. Her property was there. So they just put out a warrant for her, and then went after her later. How just is that? But how just is it to, you know, that, well, that most of those people that are homeless are usually mentally ill? Don't you guys have some way of dealing with the mentally ill people? You know, it terrifies me because my son has went through a very traumatic time this year, and he has been kind of unbalanced, and I've been terrified for him to be out on the street, afraid that he would get shot because of his, con his, his conduct, or he would be put in jail. You guys need to know how to train your people to deal with the mentally ill and the homeless, and the police officers need to be monitored. You need to do some house cleaning and get rid of the people that have that are bloodthirsty, the bloodthirsty cops, or the arrogant, <coughs> cocky cops that want to do harm to other people because Good they were evening, Council. Bad. Mary Robertson, longtime resident Thank you. and concerned citizen. Uh, Mayor Chafee, at the last meeting, May 20th, you opened the council meeting as follows. You welcomed all to the Fulton Council meeting. You went on to state, welcome, quote, welcome here. You are our guests in our house. And we like to have you here, and you should know to be treated with respect, end quote. I believe you meant to say that you should know that you will be treated with respect. <clears throat> Let me continue. Let me take a moment to educate our mayor. Mayor, this is not your house, or the house of the other council members. You're the house of the city manager, the city attorney, or our police chief. Rather, I am informing you here tonight that this is the people of Fullerton's house. Yeah. You, Mayor, are our guest for the period of time you were elected to serve us, the people of Fullerton. 
That period will be over at the end of this year. It is totally at our discretion via the ballot box in November if you wish to extend your guest status in our house or to graciously ask you to leave. The fact that you obviously do not know this is telling and it shows in your attitude toward other council members, the public, and towards me. Your attempt on several occasions to shut me down at the May 20th council meeting was very troubling. After all, this very council granted me the right to collaborate on revising the sex offender ordinance issue. I was also assured directly by Mr. Phelps that I would be allowed on May 20th to have ample time to express my concerns and or reservations with the final draft document. Based on all of the above, your conduct toward me during the last council meeting was shocking in its total disregard for the agreement you yourself made with me as a member of this council. It certainly did not demonstrate the respect you stated we can all expect here in this very chamber from you that you proclaimed in the opening comments on the meeting of May 20th. Thank you. Forget that no one was ever disciplined for the beating of Kelly Thomas. Uh, three of those officers still work for the Fullerton Police Department. Dan, you still have three of those cowards working there. Kenton Hampton, who knocked a man out on camera, um, and then was never disciplined or fired for that action, but went on to help beat Kelly Thomas to death, is now playing police football games like nothing happened. Did nothing happen? <laughs> Kevin Craig, he was a supposed commanding officer that night, and he helped the other five officers kill Kelly Thomas. We all saw the video. Everybody saw the video. This is not something I'm making up. Okay, he rendered no aid and let Kelly bleed out on the ground and then testified in court that none of these cops did anything wrong in that video, as did Corporal Rubio. But somehow he was seen fit to receive an award as Supervisor of the Year, Dan? Supervisor of the Year. Let that sink in for a minute. Are you kidding me? We will not be forgiving nor forgetting these murderers as long as we live. But it seems you're willing to go on like nothing happened, like these men are innocent somehow, like these tape, the tape doesn't exist. Now they play football games and they get awards and they coach Little League. In the meantime, Kelly Thomas is still very dead. And no justice was ever given to him. Shame on you. Shame on Fullerton PD. Shame on Dan Hughes, who puts people in jail for spray paint instead of murder. Your department illegally arrested people for filming in areas not declared unlawful. Your officers knocked down handicapped people and sir, injured please them. Please address your comments to the council, not to Mr. Hughes. I am talking to you, sir. <coughs> okay, thank you. I would please listen up because uh, it's pretty important. Give him extra time now. Can I have extra time because you interrupted me, or am I still good? Ten more thank seconds. You. Thank you. Thank you. Twenty-five. But somehow, you know, you knock handicapped handicap people down at the protest and chase wheelchair people around because one person spray painted an A six blocks away and you feel somehow that's justified? And then you send six undercover Fullerton cops and fake beers to Pasadena to arrest somebody for, for a minor misdemeanor while people get stabbed to death outside of clubs in Fullerton while arsonists are on the loose? That's the priority? That disgusts me. You disgust me. You, Joe, I'm talking to you now. And, and <laughs> If changes aren't made, someone else is going to get hurt or killed by this rogue force of men that think they are untouchable. Kevin Hampton, James Blatney, and Kevin Craig, Corporal Rubio, Dan Hughes, your disgraces, and you should all step down now. The badge is no place for cowards. Now show some respect. And I've been here on several occasions since Kelly Thomas was killed, since my brother Michael Knight was killed in Downey. Um, it's really disgusting how Fullerton has evolved over the last uh, almost three years now that since Kelly has been killed. Um, I mean, we've met some wonderful people, and uh, AJ is one of them, and I can't imagine. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just disgusted that, that your city spent how many thousands of dollars sending six cops to Pasadena to track them down. It's just disgusting. And then to go and arrest Karen, the homeless woman, uh, for not having a place to sleep. Um, 
do you guys really know where all your money's going? I mean, is anybody looking at the budget? Is anybody keeping track of what Dan Hughes is doing? You know, when he wanted to be chief, you know, he put up all this smoke and mirrors to everybody and said he was going to make all the changes in the department, but look what's, what, what's happening. It, it, it's not getting any better, I don't think. I mean, hopefully none of the cops have, have killed anybody since Kelly Thomas. I mean, that's a good thing, but arresting homeless people and going after live streamers after the protest. I was here that day in January, and uh, they were targeting the live streamers because, oh, God forbid, we don't want the public to really know what's going on behind the scenes. We don't want the public to know that we have an army of cops behind the building in riot gear, ready to come out. God forbid the public would find that out. So I wonder how many thousands of dollars that day cost your city when the majority, every, well, in fact, everybody was, was very peaceful. It was a peaceful protest. Um, yeah, and the camera lady, uh, I saw what she did, push Jordan, and then who files charges? Not, not the camera lady didn't file charges against Jordan, Fullerton did. So how much did that cost you? How much, after city attorney. That cost you money to go after someone who is defending herself from a camera woman? And did you charge the camera woman with assault? Hmm, don't think so. You guys need to get a handle on this, like, like Barry Levinson said, that you're going to be uh, I'm the site administrator of the Fullerton Informer.com, and I'm here to discuss several issues tonight once again. You know, when I walked in this room tonight, uh, it was very, very comforting to hear a Christian pastor close a prayer in Jesus' name. I can't believe that the pastor of a mega church in Fullerton can't even have the guts to do that, but here we are in a government meeting, and he has the guts to do it. And then I'm blessed with the fact that we have someone singing our national anthem, Acapelago. That flag is red, white, and blue for a reason. People died barefoot in the snow and bled out under a blue sky for what we all take for granted that is being robbed of us by people that are out of control with their false sense of security with their government public employee union contracts that think that they are beyond reproach. Well, I'm here to tell you that today's election day and it may be a primary, but after every primary, there's a general election. And let's see what happens in the fall. I'm horrified to think of what goes on at these cocktail parties. I live up on the hill, and I hear the trash cans clank when the recycle truck comes through. I know what's going on. And a lot of people's consciences in this town are seared with a hot iron. And they think because they've got a lot of dough in the bank and they've got their pensions rolling in, they think they're just above everything. Well, let me tell you. I got news for all you people that think you're sitting pretty. Your kids are getting sterilized in the classrooms with the Wi-Fi systems and these wireless devices, and you can go into denial and on that all you want. But another thing I'm here to tell you is the following. We are in big trouble on a variety of fronts, and the police state is marching on with or without your consent. And what is happening in this city is nothing more than a dog and pony show we got a lot of good PR and a lot of big money behind it, but the bottom line is the root of the problem is very deep, and it has not been rooted out. And we have people that are in complete and total denial of it, worship the establishment. I decided to take my son to Polly's, my 11-year-old son, for, a, for some breakfast on a Saturday morning last week, and had the privilege of sitting adjacent to a table with an off-duty Fullerton police officer <coughs> discussing what happened to Kelly Thomas. And my son listened to the whole exchange and what happened to Kelly Thomas, as described by this Fullerton police officer, was that he had a heart attack during the course of resisting arrest. Now, I want to tell you something. I can tell you right now that there are people in Las Vegas hotel rooms that go through far more extraneous and stressful circumstances doing things the limits of debauchery that know no end that survive that. What happened to Kelly Thomas did not mean he died of a heart attack from resisting arrest. He was murdered at the hands of several out-of-control police officers, and several of which are still on duty. And the journalists go to jail, and they're the only ones who go to the Who's Gal. We've got problems. The floor is on Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to trial, though I have committed no crime. Crimes have victims. What I did was report the news. There's no victim in live streaming. 
this man here, this gentleman here is live streaming. I don't know if it, you're also live streaming, but live streaming is not a crime. What live streaming is, is doing a, a live broadcast through a cell phone or another small device that automatically uploads onto a server. People can watch at home on their computer, they can watch on their smartphone or other device. This is what live stream is. Live stream is unedited truth. It is the purest form of reporting news. People who are live streaming, reporting the news should not be arrested for telling the truth. The lady from CBS pushed Jordan. She assaulted Jordan on January 18th. On January 18th, there was a very large man, maybe, I don't know how tall, I can't reach that high, from ABC News. He grabbed me by the shoulder and pushed me. This man assaulted me. That man assaulted Jordan Carroll. What a coincidence that two live streamers were assaulted by people from the mainstream media. And not arrested. And not arrested. What if I chose to defend myself the way my father taught me to? Would I, be, would I have gone to jail for assault? I'm facing trial, and 11 other people are facing trial, though no crime has been committed. What a shame. Is Fullerton such a rich city that you can afford to put people to trial who have committed no crime? I looked up crime statistics in the city. There is crime in the city. There are rapes in the city. There are murders in the city. There are cops who commit murder and get away with it in the city. There is vandalism. There is arson. There is burglary. There are cars being stolen. What a shame that your city is so rich that you can prosecute people who have committed no crime. You're disgusting. Joint paperwork, which in a week or so will be sent into the county as a regional shelter uh, that will be run by the county. Probably about 200 beds is what we anticipate. And I'd like uh, the city manager, anything you'd care to comment on, on the remarks that we have? Uh, just a couple in addition uh, to that. Two weeks ago, uh, Councilman Flory had uh, responded to uh, inquiries we've had regarding oil drilling. Uh, acidizing and other other potential issues related to oil drilling uh, in Fullerton and, and beyond. As a follow-up to that, I've reached out to some of the other cities who uh, had uh, expressed some similar concerns from their residents. And at a recent meeting of the seven cities in North Orange County, um, it, there's a great interest in an educational forum. Uh, there there are issues that extend beyond what's happening in Fullerton, which seems which is the acidizing of the, the six wells. Uh, but there are clearly some other. Uh, concerns, and I think that the other cities were uh, enthusiastic about putting together a, an educational forum that would cover a broader uh, spectrum of oil drilling impacts. And so we're, we're working with that, some speakers, uh, advocates for um, air quality and water quality impacts that are, that are there. So that I will come together and we look for late summer, early fall for uh, date on that. Uh, other announcement is that uh, the council chambers will be under construction starting tomorrow morning, and uh, we anticipate the next two meetings will be at the library. Uh, so in our normal location there, we'll make sure those announcements are made public. And then I believe we had items three and seven off the consent calendar, two of the construction projects. Mr. Package will come. Could you also address we debate them? Uh, we can, uh, Mr. Hawk, tomorrow we can get in touch with Mr. Bean and look at the we debate request to the fire department. We'll, we'll look into that. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Whitaker, any comments or communications? to the uh, Councilmember Ford. Passing uh, Councilmember Fitzgerald. I just want to um, let you know that I attended, uh, along with uh, Mayor Pro Tem Seaborn and our Director of Public Works, Don Hoppe, the um, Association of California Cities Infrastructure Conference. Uh, last Thursday, and if anyone has a chance to uh, learn more about uh, Mayor Greg Ballard of Indianapolis, Indiana, really inspirational story about how he has uh, turned uh, Indianapolis around, and uh, and so I would encourage you to do that. Um, I would also encourage you, you may have seen signs around town um, about fireworks, and I would encourage you to uh, get ready to go out and buy safe and sane fireworks. When you do, you support local nonprofits throughout this city 
and have a lot of fun in the process. Um, and then I also want to say how proud I am of uh, our police chief, Dan Hughes, and our police department. Um, chief Hughes, I want you to know how much we appreciate your leadership. Um, After hearing all uh, the conference here today, the city council, we, uh, we just all left, because uh, now it's just uh, BS they're talking about. Yeah, it's going to go around there. Good, good time. And you know what, they just really don't, though, seriously. They really don't.